So in the previous video, I introduced you to some of the basic uh, Boolean algebra properties that we're going to see um, when working with Boolean algebra equations in this course. Um, in this video, I'm going to uh, kind of step it up a notch and examine a few more Boolean algebra properties um, that it will be very useful to us as we go through and examine uh, Boolean logic in more detail. Um, the first one that we're going to see is a very important law uh, called the Morgan's Law. I actually misspelled it here. Sorry about that. Um, then we'll also see uh, the duality principle and the consensus theorem towards the end of this video. Uh, but let's start with the Morgan's Law. The Morgan's Law s states that if I have a statement right, that says A or B, or any statement that involves ors, for example, um, what I can do is I can change that or to an and. So this or that I see here can be changed to an and. But in order to do that, what I, what I need to do in order to flip this from an or to an and is complement each of the values on either side. So we see A becomes A naught and B becomes B naught. And then also complement the entire expression. So we see on our original expression, this is knotted. There's a knot here around this original expression. That goes away once we applied to Morgan's Law. So if I want to go from or to and, I have to complement both sides as well as the entire expression itself. And I can do the same thing in the opposite direction. I can apply to Morgan's Law from ands to ors as well. So here we see an example of A and B going back to our original statement, right? Uh, or not our original statement, actually. It's a slightly different version um, where both A and B are complemented. I now have A naught and B naught. And then I also complement the entire expression. So this, this not around the parentheses then goes away. Um, so De Morgan's Law is very, very important. Uh, you can actually prove De Morgan's Law using the other properties um, that we discussed in the previous video. But I'm not going to do that right now. I'm actually going to save that for uh, potentially a class exercise. Um, so the next uh, thing I wanted to talk to you about is this duality principle. Um, so it's easy to get duality and De Morgan uh, kind of confused. Um, I'm going to try and be uh, very clear about what's going on here so that that doesn't happen. Um, first, I need to define what a dual is. So if I give you a Boolean expression, the dual of that Boolean expression is that same expression with ands turned to ors and ors turned into ands, right? Which sounds, again, very much like De Morgan's Law. We can see here I'm turning ors into ands and ands into ors. But it's different, right? So the duality principle, to create a dual, even though I'm, I'm turning ands into ors and ors into ands, I'm not complementing anything. I'm not going to um, complement uh, the variables. So A will remain A, right? And B will remain B. And I'm not going to complement the entire expression either. Um, the only thing that I will complement is if I have any true values or false values in a, in a statement, then I will complement those. So if I see any zeros or ones in a particular expression, the dual does complement those. It does not complement input variables like A and B. So to get a dual, just to reiterate, I flip, I flip my ands and ors, and I also, if I have any true or false values, I flip those. So true becomes false and false becomes true. I do not complement anything else, right? And so what this allows us to do is uh, construct the duality principle. It states if I have two expressions that are equivalent to one another, expression one is equivalent to expression two, then the dual of expression one is also equivalent to the dual of expression two. Let me show you an example of, of how this works. On the left side here, I see an expression, right? A naught anded with B or C naught or B and D, right? And here I've stated another expression that I'm claiming is equivalent. Now, I'm not going to take the time to prove that these two are equivalent, although that is an interesting topic uh, that we are going to discuss a little bit later. But right now, assume that these two statements are, in fact, equivalent. And they are, right? If I take the dual of each of those, then those duals are also equivalent. Um, so the dual of this first expression we see right here. Notice that A0 remains the same. I did not complement the input variables. De Morgan's, if I was applying De Morgan's law, then it would complement these variables. But here, I'm not applying De Morgan's laws. I'm trying to create a dual. So what happens is that all of the ands become ors, and we see 
this or comes from this and, right? This or turned into this and, and you can see the rest of them, etc., right? And I don't have any true or false values in this particular expression. Um, so I don't need to worry about flipping those. I just flip the ors and the ands. Everything else is the same. And here's the dual then of the second expression okay, that we see here with all of the ors and the ands flipped. And so because these are equivalent, that implies that these duals of these expressions are also equivalent, which is very important. In fact, we've already kind of seen the duality principle in play when we looked at the original um, properties of Boolean algebra. That's what allows us to have the commutative property for both ands and ors, for example, um, the duality principle. That's a, that's a very simple example of the duality principle. Um, or having an and and an or version of the identity uh, property, for example. That's the duality principle in practice. Um, so it is a very useful principle that we'll see pop up when working with these expressions. And then finally, the last topic of this particular video, the last um, Boolean algebra um, tool in our toolbox is the consensus theorem. And here's the consensus theorem. The consensus theorem states that if I have this particular expression, right, x and y, x not and z, or y and z, then I can actually take this three-term expression and turn it into a two-term expression. I have x and y, or x not and z. This y and z term essentially goes away. It's gone, right? it falls off. So what's happening? I've got three variables here, right? I've got three variables in this particular expression. The thing to look out for is um, we see the complement, so I have x and x naught. That's one requirement, right? And then two separate variables that are anded together in this third term. That allows us to eliminate this third term entirely. It's, the, it's called the consensus theorem. Um, so again, I'm not going to prove this particular theorem right now, although it's a very interesting exercise that you're probably going to see at some point in class or on an exam, for, an, for example. Um, but I will show you an, another example of you know, how this is particularly useful and, and a good example of how we can use uh, Boolean algebra properties to simplify expressions as well. So here's our original expression. Right? We see A or B anded with A naught or C. And so the first thing that I want to do if I want to simplify this particular expression is I'm going to apply um, the distributive property. So we see it's just FOIL. It really is just the FOIL method. So first, out, in, and then last gives us this expression here on the right-hand side at the top. All right, so that's just from distributing everything. Then you'll notice that I've actually got um, A anded with A naught in this particular expression, which is an example of the complement uh, property. So a and a naught is equivalent to zero, which means this term basically falls falls out. This term is is gone, and so we see what we're left with down here, right? But then finally, if you notice, I have a or a naught, and then I have c and b here, where c and b are then anded together later on, which is the exact definition of the consensus theorem that we just discussed. So this b and c term on the very end also falls off and what we're left with is this particular expression right here a and c or a naught and b that gives us an equivalent expression to what we started with right so we've simplified this expression uh, quite a bit gotten rid of a few terms that we didn't actually uh, need we'll be doing more of these simplification problems um, especially in class and on the next uh, couple of homework assignments so you'll get lots of practice doing these um, but in our next um, videos, uh, we're going to take a look at how we can turn these equations into circuits. Um, and then we'll go back to some more Boolean algebra um, kinds of stuff um, after that.